we're seeing you in this incredible and intense featured film, Global Harmony. How was Richard Foster originally described to you? He was a man too good to be true, a man caught up in his ideals, uh, and a man who wanted to fight for equality for all was pretty much the description I got uh, with some emotional and traumatic uh, hurdles thrown at him throughout the uh, throughout the film, which is uh, interesting. Before I read it, I was like, oh, I wonder what that means. And, and reading it, I was like, okay, this is this would be a challenge to pull off in that kind of respect, but definitely, uh, definitely drew me in. Is that challenge then uh, what made you accept or and and really dive into the role? Yeah, I mean, I definitely connected to Richard's uh, human story of wanting equality for uh, all and wanting to make life better for. Um, and uh, someone else. I think that is something that's always been instilled in me from, from my parents. Um, and so that I kind of really related to. The What really drew me to uh, Richard is his human struggle, that it's a family drama, that he's there to protect his family, that he's a family man at all costs. And he can be blind by his own ideals. Um, and I think that is what puts it, gets him in trouble a little, that he doesn't really... I acknowledge the danger that's in front of him. Um, he's a little headstrong in that kind of way, and I've known to be a little stubborn. Um, so uh, it was definitely a, a fun challenge to make him as likable and interesting as possible in that kind of respect. Uh, but it was a challenge I was definitely up for. Was there anything you added to him then that wasn't initially on that page for him? Uh, his idealism outside of that, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I mean, when I got the script, um, I asked how, if they were open to any kind of rewrites and working on on certain scenes and reworking things, and they were definitely open to it. So uh, with an amazing writer, a friend of mine, who happens also to be Italian, her and I went through and worked on my scenes and kind of created, uh, kind of distilled it through a little uh, and down a little and um, and then fleshed it out. It definitely brought in the struggle that he, uh, he wanted to make amends from his family. So having breaking through from his, like using his family money for good, uh, that's something, something I wanted because I felt that he was a maybe a little too good. So I wanted him to have some flaws. Of, he had to have some sort of struggle that he was trying to overcome. Uh, he needed to have that kind of journey because that's what makes people, you know, fight for him and want to like root for him to win. If he's just too, if everything's just too from a place of privilege, it's not as interesting in my respect. So I think they were very open to that. I think that's where they wanted to go down anyway. But so we kind of created that together, um, which I think really helped uh, flesh and, you know, fully um, flesh out the character. There's such a sweet relationship between Fada and Richard and also his beautiful daughter. Talk about finding the bond between the three of you. You know, it was pretty easy uh, and we're very blessed because sometimes it's not like that, you know. Uh, one, when I met Rasha, who plays father of my wife, we are now super close friends. We still, I say in contact, I adore that woman. I admire her. She's so talented. Um, and this was her first film in English. So to be there with her and for her to help navigate any issues and lean on each other was yeah, honestly, it was just so easy. We, I think we, when we first met, we went out for drinks and we came home and it was like, we were inseparable on that Island. We spent every single day together. Uh, so that was, that was easy. And I think it then translated so perfectly in the film uh, because we had to rely on each other to survive in that film. Um, Fatty who plays Gaia. Uh, God, she's, she's fantastic. That was her first film and she is such, a ball of energy and I mean her English she only, only knew the English of the film so to communicate the only thing I knew was like I have nieces and nephews so I just played with her like a, like an uncle and that's how we bonded and we were you know you have to be patient with kids as well you know uh, which was sometimes hard when we're in high stress situations that we've been shooting for 16 hours the light is leaving it's hard to kind of you know adjust your patience level but she did so well and uh i we ha I have so much footage on my phone that other people filmed of her and i just playing running after each other and um you know outside the scenes because i think that trend you have to have that kind of dynamic to 
because that's his driving force is to you know save his family and if we don't connect uh, then it's not going to work so uh, but again that was easy because she was such a joy to work with well Javi Amasa does an exceptional job with the directing on this one what was it like for you working with him Amazing. I mean, not only as a director who he's an actor as well, obviously he stars in the film and he's one of the writers, but as an actor, he kind of relates to you in a different way um, because he understands your journey. So as a, when he's talking to you as a director, sorry, he, because he's an actor, he understands how you're building a character and he's so open to collaboration. There were so many times that we were about to shoot things and it just, the way that we had created uh, the character of Richard and the stories that were going on, it just didn't fit at that time that certain things were happening. I was like, it doesn't sit right with me that this would be happening. And we adjust and we would adjust because we would talk, especially with uh, Matt, our producer, and we would find the perfect harmony because the three of us, well, all of us were creating Richard. It wasn't just my job. It was their job as well. And they entrusted it with me, but then we were able to build it together and I, I absolutely adore Fabio. He's a fantastic man. And uh, to work with him again, I would jump at the chance. There's so many intense and incredible scenes to this. What were some of your favorites to film or maybe ones that challenged you the most? Certainly the blowing up <laughs> right in your face is you're inches away from those explosions. Yes, <laughs> that was a, that was a fun day. Uh, we originally, I think, had, they had some pyrotechnics um, that they had set and scheduled, but I, for some scheduling reason, it it couldn't work out. And so when I got to set, I was thinking that we were going to have some sort of mini explosion, and obviously not as big, um, something to react of. And uh, Fabio was like, okay, so because we can't do that, we're just going to do it all from your point of view and looking at you and you have to sell everything. And I'm like, okay, I have to sell this whole explosion just by uh, my facial expressions. That was difficult. That was, uh, it was difficult. Also, you know, there's like 50 people around watching you and I'm like, okay, I have to imagine the most horrible thing happening to my uh, daughter. So um, that was a challenge, but it was kind of, I love the outcome of it. I think we were well into shooting and I, you kind of have to leave your ego at the door whenever you're on set and you're like, I'm here. Uh, this is the situation. I can't just give it 80%. I have to give it 400% or no one will believe this. And if this is the moment that if you don't believe, you won't believe the film. Um, so that felt heavy, but I'm so um, happy with the outcome. How did you shake off a long day of being on set when your adrenaline is at that 400 percent you said <laughs> yeah uh you really honestly you rely on your castmates a lot we were so close we hung out became a family with the cast and crew but being on that island we we all had like little scooters so we would leave you sometimes you had to like you get home and you like you can't go to bed so you would have to like go for a walk around the water uh, you do have to like decompress because I think it's really important for your own mental and emotional uh, well-being to have a sense of release. Um, but again, it's all about, <clears throat> for me personally, it was all about family and the connection with the cast that we were able to support each other when each other were going through what they needed to go through. And um, and it was easy in that kind of respect, even though it took a little while, but it, yeah, it became easier. What do you hope lingers with people that watch Global Harmony? Is it that world piece is possible <laughs> no matter what it takes? Is there a message you hope really lingers with people who watch this? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a few. I mean, I, the biggest thing is that hope is the biggest answer, is that there will always be hope. You know, the world right now is is pretty it's pretty grim um, when you look at it, and we can't give up. We can't just get... Um, stuck in the sadness or the darkness that we need to keep pushing forward and holding on to that hope and hope holding on to the ideals that we can be better and we can help each other i mean ultimately the film is about you know someone from a place of privilege helping those who don't have the same access and i think we can all learn from that i think you know we can do that in our in our local um areas you know i'm a, i've grown up working in charities it's always something that's been instilled in me because i think it's fantastic when you can give back um, to people and you learn so much about yourself it's so it's not selfless selfish in a way you feel so good at, you know so um, to encourage people to 
you know, to see and wake up a little that, you know, there are some bad things happening, but we can collectively change it. Um, but we need to stay hopeful and, and as positive as possible. That I guess that's the biggest thing, you know.